Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 6, 2018 edition of the Sands and Earth Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yesterday I mentioned how no news is good news when it comes to the Cisco Web VPN and ASA vulnerability. Well, uh, today we got news from Cisco and it isn't good news. First highlight, the patch released last week was not sufficient to actually block all attack vectors for this vulnerability. So you need to patch again. Cisco did release another and updated patch. Next, the exploit can not only be exploited via SSL, but also via Ike version 2. So both varieties are vulnerable. Cisco AnyConnect is vulnerable, which was originally not considered vulnerable. So in short, the patch that you applied didn't work and you may actually be vulnerable even if you thought initially based on the original guidance that you were not vulnerable. And the slide deck for the presentation in Brussels last weekend was also released and an enterprising soul took it upon themselves to use it to create a denial of service version of the exploit and post it to Pastebin. So at this point, we do actually have a live exploit, simple Python script, very simple to execute. Only good part here is it's only denial of service exploit. It does not execute any random code and uh, it's probably quite a step away from executing any code on the device. And Fidelis Security came up with a neat covert channel. Now, not necessarily that we need another covert channel, but uh, this one is uh, kind of a little bit different and special in that it actually takes advantage of the TLS handshake. As part of TLS Handshake, there are a number of different extensions that may be included in order to further customize the connections. Now, the list of extension is really somewhat open-ended and while there are commonly used extensions, you can always invent your own extensions even if they're not commonly defined. And then of course, you can use these extensions to hide data. The tricky part is that a lot of intrusion detection, data leakage protection software, software doesn't necessarily look at these extensions. Uh, they really just consider this part of setting up the connection and then it'll only really start looking once the connection is fully established. They may be looking at some of the more standard components of the handshake, like for example, certificates. At this point, however, there is no indication that covert channels like this have been used in actual attacks. So I guess the attackers still have to catch up a little bit here. And well, they're probably happy with a lot of the existing covert channels they have available. And when it comes to cross-site scripting, cascading style sheets are often a little bit overlooked uh, when it comes to what could possibly be injected and a little bit older but not really very well known method to take advantage of cascading style sheets has been revived in order to possibly steal cross-site request forging tokens. The particular cascading style sheet function that's uh, being used here is what's called attribute selectors. Now, most of the time when you're trying to apply a style using CSS to a particular element, you're using a class, you're using the ID, or maybe you're using the particular name of the HTML tag that you're trying to style. But in addition to this, you can also use the value of an attribute. And of course, the cross site request forging token is usually just that. It's a value to a value attribute in, for example, a hidden form element. So essentially what you're doing is you're defining a number of different styles for a number of different possible values of this cross-site request forging tokens. And if the value matches, then the style instructs the browser to download an image because it, for example, uses this particular image as a background and the name of the image is the name of the token. Well, uh, this would be quite difficult given the large number of different tokens that are available, but cascading style sheets make this a little bit easier. You don't have to match the entire attribute value. It's okay if you just match the beginning of the attribute value. 
So you can brute force this one letter at a time, which of course makes it still not super fast, but reasonably fast. Now, one limitation of the original description of this attack was that in order to actually receive all the data and such, the site had to be rendered inside an iframe. And of course, a lot of sites to prevent click jacking and the like to not allow themselves to be rendered inside an iframe. Well, uh, this uh, newer attack now uses another sort of interesting feature and uh, that's the ability to open up a new pop-up window and then later change the content of that pop-up window by loading another site into it. And using this particular trick, it's now possible to actually exploit this style sheet feature to extract cross-site request forging tokens without having to actually use an iframe. So quick summary here, cross-site scripting is bad, really, really, really bad. And it doesn't really just depend on JavaScript. There are lots of other things that you can do. And I think attackers just sort of start playing with cascading style sheets. There are probably a lot more sort of undiscovered features uh, in this particular tool. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.